Hey, so I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, and this is going to give you the basics of how to get into Escape from Tarkov. From buying the game, to changing your servers, metting, movement keybinds, and just a ton of other helpful information that you need to know. Escape from Tarkov is an extremely complicated game, and I know that this is going to be a lot of information very quickly, but this video is meant to help lessen the pain that you feel as you start your Tarkov experience. Please keep in mind that I recorded this live, so some parts might be a little bit scuffed and I talked very fast. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to escapefromtarkov.com. It'll bring you to the pre-order page and there are a few different options of which version you can buy. First, there's the standard edition, which you're going to have the basic stash space, a smaller container. I think that this is the version that you should buy if you don't really know if you're going to enjoy Tarkov or you're just playing Tarkov for a stream. You're going to be okay with the standard version and you can also upgrade it at any time. There's the mid-tier version, which I don't know why anyone would ever buy that, so just don't even look at that. The only two that you should really worry about are either Standard or Edge of Darkness. With Edge of Darkness, you're going to have the biggest stash, additional equipment that you start with, access to Arena and the other things coming out later. You can also do offline co-op where you can play with your friends, and that is a very, very useful resource when you're getting to learn the game. That is the version that I recommend buying if you know that you're going to like Tarkov. It's the version that I have. I bought mine within a week of starting Tarkov. So do that, pre-order, create an account, you <laughs> buy the game, you download it in your profile, and then you're good to go. So the first thing that you're going to do when you open up your Tarkov launcher is you're going to go to change server because it's going to be on automatic server selection. You don't want that. You're going to unclick that right there, go to ping in the top, select all of the closest servers to you, hit apply, then you're going to go ahead and hit play. So as soon as you open Tarkov, you're going to select your language, put your name in, which mine's not enter for this account for some reason. I'm just on a fresh EOD account, not one that I usually use. You can select Bear Yusek. Bear faction is just the Russian faction. Yusek is the American faction. Yusek speaks English, Bear speaks Russian. So you can select either one. You can select your face, whichever one you choose is fine. You will not be able to change this, so make sure you select the face that you want. You will be able to change the voice that you want. These are my graphic settings, which I'll be doing a video on later. You can just take a look at them here. Uh, these are my post effects. And then for controls, I'm just going to have you change a few things. First, you're going to go to check time and exits and set it to O. Make sure it's set to press. We are going to go to push to talk and make sure that it's set on a comfortable key for you. I have mine set to mouse three, but whatever you're comfortable with using, that's totally up to you. And then we're going to go down to the bottom here and set our discard to Z. This will make it much easier to delete things out of your inventory while you're looting. So when you get into the main menu, uh, you're going to first click character and the stash is going to be pretty overwhelming. The stash is overwhelming to every new player. This is the EOD stash. So if you did go with the most expensive version, this is the stash that you're going to have. I'm going to go through a few of the things that are in the stash really quick and kind of help you before we get into a raid and explain just the basics of Tarkov and how these things are going to be used. First, I think a, a really easy way to start with that is is the metting. There are quite a few different types of medicine in this game and they do a few different things. So I think that the most important thing is first is going to be differentiating between a heavy bleed and a light bleed and which one of these things is going to help a heavy bleed and which one is going to help a light bleed. So if you have a heavy bleed, which I'm sure that I'll be able to give myself a heavy bleed and show you what that icon looks like later. If you have a heavy bleed, you're going to want to use the uh, Calic B Hemostat, a S March, or there's something called a CAT. These are only used to stop heavy bleeds. For light bleeds, you're going to have the bandage options. This one is faster and has two charges. This is just the very basic bandage. So for heavy and light bleeds as well, you can use different med kits. And for those med kits, you've got the car. Car is only going to be able to heal light bleeds and will be able to heal your character over here as well. The IFAC can heal heavy and light bleeds, but you're going to use a lot of it for a heavy bleed. And you're always going to want to have something on you for a heavy bleed at the very least. 
light bleed medication you don't really use if you have an IFAC or a Salewa or a Grizzly, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, but everybody is pretty much bringing in heavy bleed medication. So Salewa is like a big IFAC. It's a two slot, so you have to have more room for it, but it does have a little bit more on it. Grizzly is the big one because it heals light bleeds, heavy bleeds, and also is going to heal fractures. The different, we're going to be showing the difference between a fracture and blacking out a limb later, but the, this med kit is kind of a do it all. You have splints that will heal fractures as well, but a grizzly is a really good early starting item to put in your gamma container. So then on top of that, we're going to go into what painkillers do. There are a bunch of different types of painkillers. Let me go ahead and grab a few. These are only a couple of them because these are what you start with. What painkillers do in game, which will show a little bit more when I'm in there, is if you get a fracture or if you get a completely blacked out limb, if you are painkillered before the fight or if you painkiller after, you're going to be able to move around and get to cover or you're going to be able to use whatever limb is not functional and not be coughing and making a bunch of noise. These are the worst ones. If you can avoid using them, I definitely would recommend staying away from them. Propotol is a really cool painkiller because it heals you over time as well. But when you're starting out in Tarkov, you're not going to have access to them. So you're not really going to need to worry about those right now. There's going to be things like Vaseline, Golden Star, Ibuprofen that are going to have a bunch of charges and those are what people usually keep in their gamma container day to day. In order to fix a thing like a black limb, we talked about fractures. In order to fix a thing uh, like a black limb, you are going to need something called a CMS or a serve kit. CMSs only heal your blacked limb and they will not heal a fracture with it. And you can have both at the same time. So when you're starting out in your gamma container, what you're going to want is a grizzly, a CMS, some sort of painkiller, which we're gonna go with Vaseline because you start out with Vaseline here. There are food and water mechanics in Tarkov. It is pretty simple. You have your water here, you have your food here. There is a variety of food and water that you will find in Tarkov that you already have in your stash, like the Tashanka, the MRE. When you're starting Tarkov, you are going to need to bring something in because your metabolism skill is going to be very low. Now you're going to want to know what you're putting on your body, what you are bringing into your first raid, and kind of what it does. So obviously you have your gun here. There are a lot of different parts to it. We're not really worried about that on day one. There are going to be a lot more intricate videos that you can look up if you're looking for gun modification. So you've got your gun, you've got your magazines, you have your armor. The two armor types are just armor that you put on your body, and then you can also have an armored rig. Obviously, if you're using an armored rig, you're not going to be able to have body armor here it's just going to go in your rig slot helmets are pretty self-explanatory there are different classes of armor the classes of armor go from one to six you are going to not have access to high classes of armor right now right now the paka is a level two armor it is better to have some type of armor on for when you're fighting people with worse ammo than having no armor on at all then we have the earpieces right now we have on contact twos these are going to amplify some sound they are going to make other sounds quiet they are completely a preference choice whenever you get more used to the game, but they will help with hearing. So we're going to be going in with some pretty basic gear. The ammo packing system looks a little bit weird, but pretty easy, especially with the way that you can do it now. What you can do if you have an empty mag is right click on it, go to the load ammo screen, and this is going to show you all of the ammo that you can put into that mag. This is going to automatically load the 855 in there. It's really helpful when you're getting started and you don't know what 556 ammo is or 9x19 or something like that. You're always going to want to bring packing ammo in, and if you have a smaller stack of ammo, you can right click and hit top up and it's going to take the rest of the ammo that you have in your stash and just put it all together so it's easy to put away so for binding medication all you do is you put it into your tactical rig or your pocket if it is in your backpack you are not going to be able to bind it you hit something like four for this five for this six for this and when you're in game you'll be able to use those using those number keys when you go into a tarkov raid every single thing that is on your body if you die you will lose and that is with the exception of your armband your melee and what is in your gamma pouch so you will not lose these things 
when you die in raid, the rest of it is completely gone. You also don't lose anything in your special slot. That'll be things like markers, your compass, your rangefinder. When you're trying to equip things to your body, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold left alt and then left click and you will be able to quickly equip things. If you want to put things back in your stash, you're going to be holding left control and then left click and it will take everything that you have on off. This is going to be very important for in raid looting as well. So that is a very important thing to keep in mind. Now we're going to go to the traders. The traders are very important for quite a few reasons. First, the traders are going to be the only way that you can get gear. You'll see a lot of things are unexamined and in order to use them, in order to buy them, in order to reload a mag, you're going to have to have them examined. And the way to do that is to use your middle mouse and just click on them. Taking a little bit of time when you're getting started to just examine a bunch of things will for one, give you experience to get a little bit higher level in the beginning. And will also just make it easier when you're actually in game because you'll have less items to examine. Another thing about the traders is you're going to want to pick up your early tasks. The early tasks are how you are going to have a little bit of direction and what you're going to do in Tarkov. And it's also going to be how you get early experience. You'll get some items from them too and a little bit of money, but you're going to want to go and accept all of the quests that you have available. You'll know you have a quest available because you'll see that little green check mark in the top and you will accept it here. Now I'm going to teach you how to accept friend requests in Tarkov. What you're going to do is go to the messenger down here, go to the friends tab here. You're going to type the name of the person that you want to invite. Uh, go ahead and left click their name and hit send friend request. Uh, it'll send the pending friend request here. You'll be able to see that and you can always go and cancel a friend request if you accidentally send one. So now you're ready to escape from Tarkov. <laughs> there are going to be two options that you have here when you hit escape from Tarkov and that is going to be to scav or to use your PMC. Everything I was showing you before was what you're going to do for your PMC. For a scav, you are going to get a random loadout and it will be on the map that you choose at a random time. Visually, PMCs are going to look different. Generally, they will look more geared, but sometimes you will run into PMCs that are wearing scav gear. Scavs wear kind of ridiculous outfits. You can see that their pants are different, their clothes are different, and that, that's an easy visual way to see if something is going to be a scav or PMC. There are AI scavs, which are just AI that will be spawned into the game. And then there are player scavs, as I show you right here. Uh, AI scavs are going to yell at you and you'll see that in a little bit when I'm actually in a game. Make sure your PMC is selected. We're going to go next. Go ahead and select customs. Make sure you're on daytime. Hit next again. And we're going to start off by going into a practice raid. For this one, we're going to go to our game settings. Make sure bosses are not enabled because you're not going to want to deal with that your first time. Uh, AI amount as online is totally fine. Go ahead and set that AI to easy just because we are practicing. So after that, practice mode is enabled. We're going to go ahead and hit next, and then we're going to go ahead and hit ready and enter the game. Okay, now you're in Tarkov. <laughs> now we're just going to show the basics of movement. Like most games, WASD is going to be your front side to side, back and forth. If you want to lean, it's going to be Q for leaning left. E for leaning right, right is going to ADS, left click is going to shoot, X is going to prone. If you want to get out of prone, you can either hit spacebar, which is also jump, or hit crouch, which will bring you out of prone into a crouch. If you want to check how much ammo is in your magazine, you're going to press alt and then T and look in the bottom right. This is nearly full and we have 855 in it. To check your fire rate, you're going to press alt and then B. And then if you want to change your fire rate, you will just press B. Make sure that you're on full auto. It is very, very important at the start of every raid to check the fire rate on your gun. To check your inventory in raid, you just hit tab. You'll be able to see the status of your weapons. You can click on the health tab and see how your guy is doing. And then you can also check which tasks you have and your task progress. In order to use items, you're going to right click and you can just use all. On some things, you can hit use and choose the amount of the item that you want to use. In order to free look, you're going to hold on middle mouse button. You can look left, right, up and down. Whenever you are ADS, if you hold down alt, it's going to hold your breath instead of your aim. 
there is another mechanic in the game that is important and that's going to be mag packing if you reload after shooting a mag which is r you can pull your extra ammo in and pack the mag while you're in raid if you have too many items in your vest and you reload you will drop that mag on the ground to switch from normal walking to stealth walking, you're going to hit caps lock. That is going to change how loud your footsteps are and noise cues are extremely important in Tarkov. In order to run, you're going to press W and then shift. Make sure you're conscious of your stamina bar in the bottom left. You don't want it going into the red because the regeneration will be reduced. Every time you hit a bush or a tree, it makes a loud sound and people around you will hear it. Next is looting. There are a bunch of different types of lootable crates. You can loot bags here. Anything that you rub your nose on and it says search, you are going to be able to loot. In order to loot something, if it says search, press F. Uh, you'll see unsearched over here. To quickly put something into your inventory, you're going to control left click. If you want to put it back, you control left click again. Remember, we rebound our delete key to Z, so you can press Z at any time to delete something out of your inventory. If you fall from a high place, you will get a fracture. If you're fractured and not painkillered, you will limp around like this. In order to fix that, you can either painkiller and you'll be able to run while doing damage, or you can use your splint or grizzly to heal that fracture. In the top left, you can see that your legs are red, meaning that they're a bit hurt. So what you're going to do is either you have a medication bound, we can have the AI2 bound to four, and you can automatically hit that. It goes into the healing animation, totally fine. Or you can go down to your grizzly that we put in your gamma. You can right click, hit use, and it will also heal that way. Oh. So there is a difference between a blacked limb and a fractured limb. For the blacked one, you are going to have to CMS. You can either right click and hit use and it's going to choose a random one. We only have one black limb now, so it would automatically go to that. Or you can drag it onto the limb that you want to be fixed. If you have a black limb and you're in the middle of a firefight and can't immediately stop to CMS, what you're going to want to do, if you're not already pre-painkillered, is use your uh, painkiller to get to a safe place. While on painkillers, you can run to get to that safe place, but you will be taking damage all over your body as you do so. You're going to want to limit the amount of time you're running on blacked limbs. Now I'm going to explain something that's extremely important in Tarkov, and that's the left and the right peek. You'll hear people talking about how you don't want to take left hand peeks, and you do want to avoid them at all costs, and I'm going to give you a little visual on why. Right now, he is right peeking me, and this is all you can see of his body. If you go to the other side where he's taking the left peek, you see a lot more of his body is exposed, and we are going to be able to do a lot more damage. So the moral of the story, always take the right hand, never take the left hand, and you're going to be a lot safer. So right now we have a heavy bleed. Heavy bleeds are interesting because you're going to be leaving a trail of blood on the ground as you walk. This is why it's so important to bring in heavy bleed medication. Somebody could track you through your bleeding and also you're going to bleed out much faster than a light bleed. So make sure you have a hemostat or something else for a heavy bleed on top of the other medication that you bring. There's another thing that you need to keep in mind and that is fresh wounds. If you are running around with a fresh wound, you do have a chance of opening up your wound again and then you'll have a light bleed. If you have a black <laughs> stomach, you are going to be hemorrhaging food and water much faster. So if over everything else, unless you need the movement, you're going to want to heal up your stomach first. Another important thing to know is if you are moving things around in your inventory, if you hold an item and press R, it'll let you rotate it. And and that can be very, very important for Tetrising the items 
into your backpack or rig or wherever else. One of the most important things you need to pay attention to is the raid timer and extracts. The raid timer will pop up in the top right in red when you have less than 10 minutes in the raid. You can also hit O to see it at any time. And knowing where your extracts are and how they work is extremely important. If one of them is lit up green, that means the power is on to that extract and there are some extracts that need power. If there are question marks near the exfil, that means that we don't know if they're there or not and they are not always guaranteed. For car extracts, you will need money, just like the dorms V-X right here. Uh, we don't know if it's here, but you would need money if you were taking that extract. If somebody is taking a car extract, it'll light up green so you know that they are over there extracting. A good way to tell that an extract is open, like the one that has question marks up here, old gas station, is it will have something like green smoke or a light on. Some expels require keys, like this one right here. This one requires a key and power to be on. That is the ZB13 over there. This should get you ready for your first day of Tarkov. There are a lot of other videos that go into a lot more detail about movement, about weapon modification, finding your way on maps. This is just the very, very basics. Keep in mind that everybody that's played this game has had a lot of trouble in the beginning. It is very complicated. You're going to die a ton, but that's completely okay. And as long as you're enjoying the game, you're doing the right thing. Damn, dude, new player videos are a lot. There's so much shit in this game. Why is this game so complicated? Um, <laughs> why are there so many? Why is Endra underscore simp a name? Endra enjoyer? Endra cult? Why are there two Endra enjoyers? When are they adding sex to this game? You don't want sex to be added to Tarkov. Uh, if you play Tarkov, you're no nobody that plays Tarkov is is getting laid. That's not going in the YouTube video. I note for editor. Do not put that in the YouTube video. Do not say if you play this game, you will never get laid. The fact that I have so many of you in here that are watching me do this scuffed thing is honestly amazing. Gosh, Andrew, this is exhausting. <laughs> this is why I do not do tutorial videos. <laughs> tutorial videos are a pain to record. In order to run, you're going to want to press W and then click shift. Uh, make sure that you are staying conscious of your stamina bar in the bottom left. You're not going to want to let that go into the red. And when it goes into the red, it will make your you Tarkov. Are you joking? <laughs> I hear the editor is really handsome. Do you? I actually have no idea what this editor looks like. Hey, chat wants to know if you're handsome. All right, message the editor. We're going to find it out. I'm probably the most handsome person to ever exist. <laughs> is what he said. So right now we have a heavy bleed. Heavy bleeds are interesting because you're going to be leaving a trail of blood on the ground as you walk. And as I was talking about earlier in Stash, you have to bring heavy bleed medication that I didn't bring into raid. Uh... All you have to do is press R and you can rotate the items infinitely. It will help you fit things into places that they belong. That take is it's going in. I, I'm it's not sure in. about that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> do you think that's not a good one for the... Do you think that's the not hesitation a good was video? very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> a good way to tell that an extract is open like the one that has question marks up here old gas station is it will have something like green smoke or a light on yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of a mess <laughs> uh there is no way to tell the difference between your friends and enemies <clears throat> what the, are you ruining my recording oh shit, my bad i'm recording what do you need people want to know what your fish sounds sounded like <laughs> this is going in the video by the way stank rat underscore i don't i don't want the youtube you're you're going can you can you go ahead and give me a fish sound for the youtube video we want to know what your fish noise was like fish if... don't really make noise 
they do they go like glug glug <laughs> they do not they do not do that have you ever been underwater have you ever been underwater i have been underwater and i've or never heard a fish do that i don't Are know you sure? what kind of fish you're glug, I'm telling glug. that's not what that is not what fish sound like i'm consistently just wanted disappointed to hear the glug, with glug. you i am not going to let you bait me into doing some glug clog sound Oh, we almost got it. <laughs> I, I'm going to send you a YouTube video uh, of fish sounds by Na uh, I, National is it, Geographic. Is it going to be on YouTube or is it going to be on a different website? It's, it's fishhub.com. Fishhub.com? <laughs> fishhub you never... For, okay, uh, obviously you're not a, a fish uh, oh, enjoyer. I, so. am, I am not nearly as much of a fish enjoyer as you. And I'm okay with that. Well, that's okay. You know, we're, I'll, I'll send you some stuff. Thank you. And we can practice together. I don't know if I want to... You know, maybe we should practice separately.